Hey everybody, Jake here from Bearded Gear, and it's first impressions time. Uh, this is my Monterey Bay Knives Sea Otter, and this is a brand new model from Monterey Bay Knives. It is the first knife that they're building in-house on their own machines, and uh, I'm stoked about it. I picked this knife up at Blade Show West. It was the first knife that I bought at the show. Uh, when I saw that they had them there, I jumped on it. I didn't know if they were going to be bringing any. They had them on the table. I just said, I'll take one. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, so this is really, really cool. Monterey Bay Knives has been around for at least a few years now. I'm not exactly sure when they started, 100%. I know I've been aware of them for a few years. <laughs> um, and they consist of a, a duo. It's Monterey, or sorry, it's... Ray Laconico, um, who's prolific on his own as well, even outside of Monterey Bay Knives. He's designed a lot of knives um, and builds customs and all kinds of stuff. And then the other player is Sanford Owen, and they're both awesome dudes. I've gotten to chat with them now um, two shows in a row, both USN and Blade Show West. Nice guys, super fun to talk to, know a ton about knives, more than me, I'm sure, both of them. Um, and they run a cool knife company. So... Yeah, I've been really excited about them making the move from working with OEMs and doing production runs of knives to buying machines and building their own knives in house. And this is the first this is the first effort at that. And uh, effort isn't even the wrong the right word. This is a success in my book. Um, this is one of their first builds ever. They only brought I don't know how many, but on the table day one, when I bought this one, there were probably eight left. I think two spaces were empty, so about 10. Maybe they sold 10 a day-ish. Um, they split them up between days, which I think is cool when makers do that so that people who can't come on day one have a chance at stuff on day two. Anyway, um, yeah, this is one of the first, I don't know, probably 20-ish <laughs> that they've built of these. And uh, they're using CPM 154 for now. Ray Laconico is still hand grinding all of these because that's where they're at in their production process. And uh, I, I believe their plan is to get to a point where they are machine grinding them because I, I, don't, I doubt he wants to, at a production level, be grinding every single blade. Um, but yeah, so let's talk about what it's made of. I've already said the blade steel. The rest of it is just titanium. We've got titanium show side scale. This one has the fuller. That's a very Ray Laconico design feature. Um, this one is rocking standoffs. They did have one build there that had a backspacer. That was one of the auction knives that I saw. Um, most of them had these spacers uh, or standoffs you could call them. Titanium pocket clip, super simple, and titanium lock bar. No insert, so it's just titanium that I'm assuming, actually I'm, I'm confident, is carbonized on the face. I've ex experienced zero lock stick on it so far. Um, I'm not sure if the thumb studs and hardware are titanium. I'm just kind of assuming that they are, but I could be wrong. They could be steel. I really like these thumb studs. We'll talk about that some more. Um, not all thumb studs are created equal, but yeah. CPM 154, hollow ground, titanium, and uh, that's what we're rocking. So, Let's talk about, um, I think I'm going to save my kind of categorical like Ergo's action carry cutting and I'm going to go through one at a time when I do my full review soon. But I wanted to catalog kind of a first impressions because I'm at a point with this knife where I carried it all day long today. Um, I did at the show after I bought it, carry it for about a half a day and um, I flicked it a whole bunch of times. <laughs> it's a, for a thumb stud knife really good. We'll talk about that. But I'm, I'm at a point where I, I'm like, I feel like I've really scratched the surface on what this knife is about. And I've started to just get a good proper feel for it. Um, but I'm not, I'm not all the way there yet either. And I know I still have a lot to learn about this knife because I haven't done that much cutting with it. And it's only been in pocket and two different thin pairs of pants. And you know, like I just, I need to do more with it. So let's talk about what I've experience so far. Um, the things that stick out to me, I should say. So the thing that sticks out to me, number one, I guess I could have talked about this in the build, but this knife is not running on bearings. This knife is running on washers. I don't know if you'll be able to see that. Um, I'm typically these days, 
finding myself buying way more knives on bearings than I am on knives on washers. But that doesn't mean that I dislike knives on washers and I can appreciate when they're done really well. Um, this knife, for a knife on washers, is poppy in a good way. The detent, shout out to Lefty EDC. The detent is just really well dialed for these thumb studs. And it's interesting because this action isn't doing the things that I typically look for in an action. I'm Mr. Holes are greater than studs, right? Thumb studs are not my favorite deployment method. Washers generally don't get me excited like a really nice bearing action will. But there's something really satisfying about the way this knife pops. With a thumb flick, it just it has got a good pop to it in a way that other, let's say, U.S. built, U.S. designed, U.S. market, um, titanium frame lock thumb stud knives in the four to $500 category um, don't seem to do for me. So <laughs> shout out Sabenza, I guess, while I'm making it clear. Um, it just, it has a, a pop to it. I don't find that most washer thumb stud knives that I've handled have felt like that. Um, it just feels really nice. Now on closure, it's certainly not a drop shutter. I suppose it's possible if you were to, I don't know, polish these washers and splash in some lube and all that kind of stuff, maybe it could be worked on. I haven't taken a tool to this knife at all whatsoever. Um, I've left it exactly, exactly how I got it from the table. So it has broken in a little bit. It's gotten a little bit smoother as time has gone on. And I'm kind of curious to see if it just keeps smoothing out. I may dribble some KPL or some Gunny Glide or is it Gunny Glide? Gunny, Gunny Juice? Gunny Glide is the lube one. Um, I might sprinkle some of either of those in at some point. Um, I didn't just say both of those to cue some internet argument. I just have bottles of both sitting on my desk. Um, yeah, I, I might try a little bit of lube at some point. Maybe I'll disassemble it at some point. I don't, I'm not left EDC. I don't typically <laughs> disassemble every knife just to do it. Um, but yeah, it's it's got this action that it pops in a really fun way. And I find myself, like today in the car for a while, I was running some errands. I was just doing this over and over where I was just popping it open and then pulling it shut, popping it open, pulling it shut. And it's a different type of like mechanical motion for my hand to do than a knife like my Holt Haptic where I'm using a flipper and it rockets out and then I'm getting my thumb out of the way and it drops all the way shut. That's a different type of fun. Um, this is still kind of scratching an itch for me in a way. I found myself several times today when I was like, perfect example, I was standing in line at the post office and I had just been driving to the post office and doing this. And then I got there, I was standing in line, it was taking forever. And I got this like compulsion <laughs> to pull the knife out of my pocket and flick it. Um, and thumb stud knives don't normally do that for me. I fought the urge because I was at the post office, so it wouldn't have been appropriate in a Southern California post office for me to whip out my knife and start fidgeting with it. Um, but yeah, that just doesn't really happen to me usually when I'm carrying thumb stud knives, um, especially on washers. Like I think my favorite thumb stud knife I own, I was just playing with it this morning actually, is my Birch Tree Secant. That knife is phenomenal on thumb studs, but it feels really different than this because it's on bearings, it is very drop shutty, um, it, it's more of like a snick, whereas this is more of a pop. And I don't know how well I can explain it other than to say that, and maybe you've experienced knives that are each of those things and that'll help you understand, maybe not. But the action is just way more compelling on this knife than I imagined it would be. Or even when I picked it up at their table, was handling it to buy it, picking which one on the table I wanted, I wasn't thinking like, oh, what I'm gonna like about this knife is the action. What I was thinking I was gonna like 
was the blade because it's a very usable shape and the hollow grind is nice and thin down here in this kind of primary cutting zone. The tip is going to be very usable. Um, I thought I was going to like the ergos and I do so far. Um, I thought I was going to like the size because it's a very good size for me. I'm just barely getting all four fingers on there, but no extra. There's I can choke up a little bit to here if I want to. The jimping isn't super aggressive. There's like a lot of things that I was like, okay, this is good. And at the same time of realizing all those things were good, I also just wanted to support the fact that they're making a knife in their own shop, that they've made the jump that seems to be kind of the opposite of what a lot of uh, makers do. You see kind of a trend over the last couple of years, or at least I perceive one, where a lot of custom makers who make customs have decided it would also make sense to do production runs. And I agree, it does make sense. But you see a lot of guys like Brian Browns or Wear Knives or I don't know, name, <laughs> sharp by design. There's several makers who make custom knives who've then gone and added a production element where they're using overseas production because that's the production that's available, right? But this is the the inverse of that. You've got this company that's been doing overseas production runs of cool designs and they've now taken their newest cool design and they've brought machines in in-house and they've taught their staff how to use them and they've gotten to a point where they're making a knife in-house and it's going to be a production knife this isn't like they're making customs they're still hand grinding them at this point i love that i got one of these early ones that ray laconico hand ground that makes me really happy but um yeah it's just it's there's all these things about it that were what fueled me to buy one and what's making me really, really intrigued is the fact that I'm kind of falling in love with the action on a knife that is so different from if you were to ask me to describe what type of action I like most, this wouldn't be it. But it's drawing me in and I'm liking it. It's just, it's kind of shocking me a little bit in that way. Um, but yeah, so, so far it's been good um it's been pleasant enough to carry it doesn't have a deep carry clip i wish it did that's a me preference thing uh, some people will love that it doesn't i do wish it had a deep carry clip maybe that'll be an option somewhere down the road i don't know um, if it is i'll grab one and i'll toss it on that would be sweet but other than it not carrying super deep it carries very comfortable this profile is stupid comfortable to carry it's not super lightweight because there's no internal milling but it's fairly small it's titanium it's not super heavy either um, it feels kind of heavy in a welcome way too. I don't know. I'm, I'm liking it. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's weird. Like I expected to like the knife, but I also, there was a, a big part of me that just wanted to support this endeavor. And so the fact that it's kind of wowing me a little bit is making me really happy because it's also, it's the type of thing I just want to see succeed. And I didn't come into it, I don't know, overly like having to like it. I, I was still open to the idea that I, I could end this review and I still, maybe I'll find out it doesn't scratch all these itches and I find some things that bug me about it before I do the full review or something. But I, I was open to the idea that I could get to the full review and be like, bravo to them for doing this, but it's not for me. You know, that's a thing that happens fairly often. Like... <laughs> It's not that uncommon for me to review a knife that I'm not absolutely in love with, and my tone by the end is kind of like, it's good It's good at this, it's good at that, I can see where they're going, it's just not my preference, I don't personally love it, but that's okay, other people might. In this case, it would be like, I love that they're doing this, I love that they're bringing it to the U.S. and they're using U.S. labor and hands and they're making these in a shop in California that's so much cooler than having a production run done overseas. Like, I want to applaud that, but I don't love it. And I don't see that happening. <laughs> I just, I'm really, really liking it in a way that I, it's it's catching me off guard a little bit. Um, these thumb studs, by the way, are really well done. Let me see if I can try to show you. It's going to be awkward to middle finger flick on this angle, but it's a it's nice to middle finger flick. It's so poppy with the thumb. I don't, it's, it's really well done. Um, it doesn't feel like a first effort either, which it's not, to be fair. Like, Ray Laconico has been a knife maker for a long time. Uh, the people working in the shop, two of them, are 
Lindy and Richie, the knife modders, and they're constantly working on knives and they know their way around them. And Sanford has been around knives for forever. I'm sure they have other help there of also knife people. And so it's not like it's really like some hobbyist is just like putting out their first knife. These are knife people through and through. So I guess maybe I shouldn't be as surprised as I am. But still, it's the first one that they're doing in-house. You know, like there is some truth to that. So I don't know. Maybe this was a little all over the place. Hopefully it seems transparent because I guess I'm just kind of sorting through my thoughts as I verbalize them here. But I like this knife. I, uh, I'm i really glad that I got one. And uh, it's not perfect. It's not like the most mind-blowing thing ever. But I'm kind of digging its imperfections. Or I don't know. Imperfections is the wrong word. Things that aren't necessarily usually my preference. Um, in fact, if you told me to point to an imperfection on here... I don't know that I can see one. There's nothing that's off-center about it. There's nothing. There's zero blade play. It's crazy locked up front to back, side to side. The grind is perfect. The edge is perfect. Like, the fit and finish is phenomenal here. Imperfections was the wrong word to use just then, but maybe you can get what I'm saying. Anyways, <laughs> this has been an interesting one. I guess those are my first impressions, if you can call it that, of the Monterey Bay Knives Sea Otter. I'm really stoked that I got this. I will be doing a full review soon. Hopefully by the time I get ready to do my full review, I can be a little more concise and I'll have this a little more figured out. But anyways, thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate it. I'll see you on the next one.